Hi, I'm Jean Nolte, editor at Fonts and Porter. And I'm Colleen Tauke. I'm the sewing specialist for Fonts and Porter. In this tutorial, we will show you how to construct the merry-go-round quilt. To get the pattern for this quilt, go to shopfonsandporter.com slash quilting quickly. This is a fun little baby quilt in bright colors. Mm -hmm. It'd be good for a little boy. Exactly. So it's an easy quilt, really. Um, it's it's kind of like one great big block. Exactly. That's what I was actually going for when I came up with this idea, is that we love kind of star blocks. How about make it really big? As we're always usually under a, the gun to get baby quilts done on time. That happens. <laughs> so this is is uh, made using pre-cut five-inch squares in a variety of bright colors. You need 24 of those. And then you need to choose a background fabric, and you'll need 24 five-inch squares of that as well. Now, background fabrics, a lot of times people will think, I'm just going to use a light color fabric. Um, Put a little interest into that. You can go into a polka dot like this. Um, it has the colors that are in the brights that we're going to use, but it creates a little more interest, not being quite so flat. Yeah, there's still plenty of contrast between the, mm -hmm. the brights in this background. So the first thing we're going to do is mark the light squares. So I'm going to turn that over and we use this tool called a quarter inch seam marker and I'm going to place it so the yellow line goes exactly from corner to corner, and you're going to draw a line on either side of it. Now, you can use a mechanical pencil, so that makes a nice fine line. Or we found a new item that we really like, it's called a friction pen. And you can draw on there with that, and it'll show up nicely. I'm using a purple, they come in lots of colors. And we're using a darker color so you can see it really well on, on and TV. And don't worry if you put a pretty, you know, pretty good line on there so you can see that really well. The when nice you part touch about that, that, yeah, when you touch that with an iron, it's going to disappear. Mm -hmm. You'll see that in a little bit here. Okay. So you would mark all of your background squares first, I think. Mm -hmm. If you don't have this quarter inch seam marker, you could draw a line from corner to corner on your white square and then just draw another line a quarter inch away on each side and you get the same thing. Those lines are your sewing lines. Exactly. So we're going to take one bright and one white square and Colleen is going to stitch Get those. these ready to stitch. Now line those up as best you can, making sure the outside edges are all lined. Um, at the beginning when you're first starting to make these kinds of blocks, you may want to put just a couple of pins in so they don't have a shift. Um, sometimes we call these kind of our uh, training wheels because by the time <laughs> you get down to like block 15, 16, you might be um, pretty sure of where you're going to be stitching and, and not have a slide. But at the beginning, it's nice to have something to hold them in line. Now, I'm going to be using red thread here so you can see where we're stitching. And then as you come to each of the pins, try to remember to take them out so that you don't blunt the tip of your um, sewing machine needle. And if you can sew just a little bit to the inside of that line, your blocks will come out very sweet. Okay. And, and you have a good trick so you don't have to stop and start at the corner. I, I don't like having to start and stop and break thread. So what I do is lift my presser foot, leaving the needle in the fabric, jump across to the other side of the tightrope here, and come back the other direction. I just like to be able to go as quickly as I possibly can. And again, you're sewing just a little bit to the inside, inside. toward the, that the center, center. that channel. Okay, and if you had all of them marked, you could just keep sewing, mm -hmm. chain stitching. Pair up one light, one bright color as you go along. In this process, you're not just making one block, but you're actually making two at a time. So I'm gonna cut these in half. I used a ruler, you don't have to. Um, it doesn't have to be accurate because you've already marked your accurate seam line. So the next thing we're going to do is press these and you always want to press toward the dark. So I'm going to bring that over here, set that out of the way. Remember to always set your seam first, warm up the fibers so that when you go to open to the seam allowance, it gives you a nice crisp triangle square. So you make sure that's all the way opened up. Right. You don't want to have a false, but we sometimes we'll call it a false ditch, where there's, if you pull on it, there's a little space down in there yet. You want to open it all the way up to the seam line. Okay, now, sometimes we trim the corners or those little dog ears yeah, off. Yep, yeah, we call these little pieces out here dog ears, but this time we're not going to do that. Not this time. So I'm going to trim this block to four and a half inches because it's a little oversized. We've started with charm squares or 
five inch squares. You can cut five inch squares out of the fabrics you have at home. You could select a variety of fabrics from um, when you're shopping. But we're using five inch, so when we get done making our triangle squares, they're kind of a funny math. So we'd like right. to take them to an easy, so, easy, yeah. easy number. So you can see I've got a special ruler here called a square up ruler that has um, a, a yellow piece of plastic on the back that makes a little ridge that fits right along that seam allowance. If you're using a regular ruler, it probably would have a diagonal sure. line here, a 45 degree line, which you could use. So I'm gonna find the four and a half inch line over here and make sure it's inside all of the fabric here and the four and a half inch line here and that's good and then I'm going to trim this right side and the top and some and of it might not be trimming very much at all. Look, just trimming at just, a little tiny bit so that you can have a really sweet block in the end. Okay now I'm going to turn that around. We've only tr trimmed two sides so, so, so we do the other two. This is on top. I'm going to also turn my ruler around. Snug that. Snug that back up there again. Now this time I'm going to line up the four and a half inch line with the left hand side and the four and a half inch line with the bottom and just see if there's anything to trim off. This side is good and the top there's just a teeny bit. little bit so you can see. It's not, not much waste. very much. No waste. Nope. So you're going to make all of your blocks like that and then you'll need a few four and a half inch squares. You'll notice these are smaller than the ones you started with here. They were five inch, these are four and a half inch, and so you'll have 48 of these units when you're done, and you'll, you'll need just a few of these squares right. in the layout. The entire block is made with that four and a half inch cut block, so they all finished four, and follow the layout in the pattern, making sure that you um, align the light sides and dark sides to make the, cor the um, correct design. A little tip, when you have it all laid out, just to make sure that you have that star in the center correct, Take out your cell phone and use the camera. Take a little picture. It will give you a longer perspective and it will become really obvious if one little triangle square is turned the wrong direction. You'll also notice if there's a, a couple of colors that are grouped together, if True. there's an area True. that you don't really like and it's a good time then to, you may to rearrange a little put bit. put three or four kind of red blocks all together and it will jump out at you and that long shot on your, on your phone. So um, enjoy making merry-go-round and thanks for joining us today. To watch more of our videos, go to video.fonsimporter.com.